Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 4, Part 3 of the discussion, God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing the operation of God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, introducing facts about the laws of compensation or the analogy of reaping what is sown, and how compensation drives forgiveness and repentance. This session was recorded on 19th of September 2017 from 10.50 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Let's move on to compensation after the death of the physical body. So while we can actually see the results of our sin while we're living on earth, if we want to, <laughs> we don't often want to. We often want to deny sin, don't we? Yeah. And we have lots of techniques for denying sin. Including and denying the pain and suffering <laughs> exactly. that comes from our sin. <laughs> exactly. And, and because we, we want to ignore the pain and suffering itself, um, then we also don't want to know that... We, we, the first problem is we want to ignore the pain and suffering. The second mm. problem is when we do want to see the pain and suffering, we want to not think that there might be a cause. Exactly. We, <laughs> want, to, we want to blame it on something physical or something yes. like that. Yes. <laughs> Instead yeah. of saying that there's a spiritual or, or an emotional or a love-based issue that we need to correct. Yeah. Mm. So all of that leads to most of the world's population living in total denial about mm. the laws of compensation and, and what's actually happening, doesn't it? Um, and how actually those laws are operating right now to help us to develop a desire to remove sin from ourselves right now. Yes. So unfortunately, a lot of people ignore that. So it's up to after we pass, um, some other things start to happen to help us to really grow that desire, don't they? Fortunately. Fortunately. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd stay in that state for probably forever or for a long time anyway, much longer than we need to, obviously. So, yeah. So the, the main um, question that we'll answer in parts now is what happens to us to help us become more aware of our condition and how to repair the damage we've done on Earth after we pass mm. into the spirit world, after we leave our physical body. Mm. So, in order to answer that question... <laughs> We've almost got to have a whole series of questions, yes. don't we, now, that sort of lead us to answering that question. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, first up, um, let's talk about how sin feels for the average person living on Earth. Yeah, so just before we die, this is, let's say, we're, yeah. we're, we're there, we're, we might not be on our deathbed yet, but it might be close now, you know, we might be in our 70s or 80s, we're still yeah. functioning fine, but that's just around the corner. How do we feel about sin? Yeah, how do we, <laughs> how do we feel, feel about sin? <laughs> how does sin feel for us? Well, I suppose... Um, Obviously, when we're 80, it might have felt different to when we were 20 as well. Uh, yes, it can do very, very much. The so. same sin, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, and in fact, usually that's what happens mm -hmm. over time. We feel the full effects of sin, and therefore feel its negative consequences quite more largely. Initially, when we sin, though, when we first engage sin, obviously we wanted to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we obviously wanted to do it for a reason, and that yeah. reason was that we thought there was going to be some good thing that came out of it, you know, yeah. some obviously selfish thing, but something that we thought would be good, you know. So And so often when we first engage it, we do actually feel happy and good, don't we? Yeah, well, we think we enjoy it. Yeah. It's probably a good way of saying it. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, obviously the sin feeds our addictions and demands. And so we go, oh, you're getting what I want. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm getting what I want, I want now. Yes. So, yep. so I, sin still, I still want to sin under yeah. this space because I'm getting what I want. I think I'm getting what I want. I, no, I'm not sensitive because, as we've already discussed in other parts of this discussion about compensation, we're not often very emotionally sensitive and mm -hmm. our conscience isn't bothering us and, mm -hmm. and we're not logical and we're not mm -hmm. looking at the cause and effect issues of pain and suffering and we're not yep. self-aware and we're not <laughs> self-reflective and, and we're not even wanting to listen to anything that's happening in their sleep state so yep. that we can yep. tell us that something's wrong, you yep. know, 
So, so we're in a lot of shutdown. We're in a lot of denial here. We're in almost what you and I commonly refer to as this compulsive frenzy, aren't we? Of course. That's what we... And and, and it's it's seemingly has great rewards for us. It's it's the way we see it in that place. So, So naturally, we're driven in this frenzy. And the frenzy isn't even recognized a lot of the times, is yeah. it? It's like, yeah. it's like, it's you, not usually. You, you wouldn't even call it a frenzy. You just call it, oh, it's Normal. my, it's my character. It's my nature. It's what I need. It's what, you know, it's living my life. It's how I yeah. live my life. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all viewed as normal yeah. uh, at this stage. And any pain and suffering that uh, I'm personally feeling or other people are feeling as a result of my actions is usually completely ignored as well yeah. as if I, you know, so as if I didn't cause it, you know, yes. so, something else did, some some other magical process must be happening. It must be God's fault that you're in pain and suffering or that I'm in pain and suffering. It's got nothing to do with my sin that I'm in pain yeah. and suffering is the way that I'm thinking right yes. at this stage. Yeah. So here I am, I've, I've, I'm engaging, this is when I'm first engaging the sin. Yeah. Obviously, over time though, mm-hmm. The law of attraction, the law of cause and effect, the law of compensation are all kicking into gear now. So we've got a number of laws now all showing us in increasing intensity Mm -hmm. that something is wrong. So now how does it start to feel? So now how does it start to feel? Now it starts to feel like, firstly, I don't seem to be able to get the same satisfaction from my sin as I used to. Mm -hmm. Now, this will usually cause me to do one of two things. It will either cause me to increase the sin mm. and hope that, you know, the results are more powerful. To try and, you were chasing the results. We're chasing aren't we? the results, yeah. you know. Or it might, we might go, oh, oh, isn't that weird? There must be some other thing inside of me that's never going to be satisfied. Mm-hmm. And it can cause us to feel sort of tired and exhausted trying to satisfy. Yeah. Uh, the particular thing and never ever getting really satisfied. Yeah, so we start to feel less satisfaction in our life. We feel worn out by life. Yeah. We've, we might start getting sick. Yeah, and, frequently. Yep. Frequently we start getting sick um, yeah. and have recurring pains yeah. that develop into chronic pains. And that's, that's an indication, yeah, that I'm resisting something here and and if you're really honest about it, you go, oh, boy, you know, you now, now you're starting to get this sort of awareness develop mm-hmm. that something's wrong. Mm-hmm. You might not yet really want to know what it is, you know, mm-hmm. but, but at least you're aware that something's not quite right now because there's all this stuff going on that I wasn't expecting. I, I thought that if I kept doing this thing that made me happy, mm-hmm. satisfied, that it would continue to always satisfy me. Yeah, I think you are giving humanity a lot of leanings there. I've met a lot of 80-year-olds who have no feeling that they've, that, that's possibly not fair, but most uh, people don't ever really draw this link, do they, at, at its truest level between their pain and suffering and... Well, no, no most people think there are in pain and suffering. They know but they, they, they don't, are. Yes, they know that. Particularly definitely. by the time they get aged. Yeah. They know that they've got a fair bit of pain and suffering. There's usually a box of pills on the side cabinet, you know, uh, you're keeping them even functioning and alive, right? So. But would you say that they... Uh, but they don't trace it back to that's, its cause. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. They don't. No. They, they, usually at this stage, you, you're aware something's wrong, but you blame it on, you know, natural processes or... You blame it on God's design, or mm-hmm. you blame it on cruel God being wicked and cruel, or you blame it on you know if evolution, or mm-hmm. you, you come up with some reason other than the real reason yes. that is that you've sinned. Yeah. Um, that for, that is the cause of all this pain and suffering. So that's by the time we're now ready to die, you know, and uh, whether we're twenty or eighty. Usually that's the kind that we have anywhere in that range mm-hmm. uh, that we've already discussed where we actually feel. This is how we feel when we're on earth about sin. It's like yeah. we don't have very, very strong definitions of sin. Or if we do, they're quite religious and very ill-formed mm-hmm. in the sense that, you know, we don't really understand it. 
and uh, or we have a lot of guilt associated but we don't really understand why we desire to sin still and all those things yep and we still want the rewards well seemingly the rewards of sin and so forth and usually most people who uh by the time we're you know lived a full life on earth so-called full life on earth um we're usually in that state where we don't have a very strong understanding of sin or its consequences at all mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. okay so that's the state for most people and their relationship to sin when they're living on earth if we believe and in sin at all if we believe in <laughs> obviously yeah. there's a lot of people who don't yeah mm. yeah so this has relevance uh to what's going to be the conditions when we pass of course but we'll get back to that mm. because there's something else we need to discuss first mm -hmm. People who die are not immediately aware of their own passing. So this is important in, our, in the relevance to our broader discussion we're having here about compensation after the death of the physical body. Yes. Why are people who die not immediately aware of their own passing? Well, you know, you could list thousands of reasons, but let's, we need to remember some basic things about death, really, that we okay. need to, and, and if we think about them, we can see, well, this would help people not be aware of what's really gone on, you know, that they have that actually passed. passed. Yeah. <clears throat> the first thing is that death itself is not as a painful experience as most people believe it's going to be. Mm. Um, you know, it, it could be likened to going to sleep or just a faint, you know, mm. or and, and even if you have a car accident or other things like that, stuff that's quite often thought to be traumatic, your body, there's certain body functions that kick in and chemicals that kick in in your body that sort of detune you, natural, natural chemicals that kick in, that detune you from the uh, painful sensations to a degree. And... And these kind of things then cause you to think, oh, you just had an accident, but now you're well again. Or yeah. now you, you've, you, you, you know, you just went to sleep and now you woke up again. Or, or you know, oh, you just dropped off and you, you know, <laughs> I don't know why you dropped off, but you did, I just did and now I'm awake again. And, and because of all of these different factors, we don't even see that death's actually happened. Mm. So we still, we, there's a number of other reasons, of course, too. Firstly, our soul condition hasn't changed. In other words, we we still believe ourselves to be the same person we still think the same way we still feel the same way we still have the same awarenesses and belief systems that we had before none of these things have been removed from us mm -hmm. so so we're still believing that we're pretty much the same person most people don't look at themselves very much in the sleep state because there's no in, in, the, in the in the sorry spirit state, state after yep. they've passed because there's too many other things going on around them to look at themselves so they don't look in the mirror and go do i look the same or anything like that if if they did that actually that would actually help them wouldn't it because our Frequently. facade is gone is that's the one important thing that does change after and we our clothes are often you know if we're if we've been an active sinner our clothes are often like rags yeah. and we all of a sudden go oh, why am i wearing rags for you know what i mean when before i was you know wearing a nice suit or something before i passed but but we don't we don't think to do that oftentimes and uh, and so and we don't and because there's no clear idea or concept of death beforehand um you know religious or otherwise we uh, we we tend to not even look at these kind of factors to see what's actually happened mm -hmm. and to analyze the situation mm -hmm. so for the majority of people we just are not aware that we died <laughs> yeah so because because um and all, so you've listed those things that, you know, it's not as painful as we think it's going to be, which is ironic, isn't it, considering how much fear there is of it on Earth. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's not such a big uh, dramatic thing. No. If often people experience. And because they are basically the same person with the same condition, it, it, there's not, that's quite relevant as well. And the final thing that we had noted here to mention was that any education that we receive after we pass, 
is all based on our own desire. So if we don't actually want to know what's going on. Yeah, and let's face yeah. it, most people on earth don't want to know what's going on and yeah. don't want to get exactly. a higher education, education of any kind, <laughs> particularly when it comes to a soul, emotional, spiritual education. Mm -hmm. that, that is an area of most people's lives that are completely yeah. ignored. Yeah. And so as a result of that, most people are not going to get any help or education either because there's no yeah. desire for it. Yeah, mm. yeah. So because of all of that, for most people who do die, number one, they're not aware that they've actually passed. Yeah, which which is like just not even, just totally clueless that even a passing has happened that yeah. it's been their own. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just like no, no, no knowledge whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they, don't, they don't have any belief that they've died. Yeah, so now this is this... a little bit different than awareness because belief is associated with things like, a lot of times associated with things like uh, what, have, what we believe before we past you know so so you know if you believe that after you pass you'll go to heaven and you're not in heaven yep then you don't think you passed yep. or if you believe that after you passed there'll be like there'll be judgment at the other time of judgment and there wasn't a time of judgment you won't think you passed mm -hmm. or if you believe that after you pass you'll meet your family and your friends and, and you'll be with them and you're not yeah then you don't think you passed and if you believe that when you died you'd best be dead and, and now yeah, you're, you're still not dead, yeah. so you think you're not yeah. Yeah, died at all. And, yeah. and there's all sorts of uh, belief systems that can impact upon the, uh, the, the, um, the interpretation of mm. the passing, mm. if you like. So essentially you're saying no matter what belief I have about death um, before it happens, if, if I have that strong belief, even if it is just I'll be, I'll be nothing, I'll be wiped out of consciousness or you know, yeah. any religious belief. When my experience doesn't match that belief, then very often I sort of, in my logic of that belief, mm -hmm. think, well, I can't have passed then. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And, and even though there are signs that you've passed, yeah. you, you have a tendency to not believe them because the fundamental belief that you had uh -huh. of what would happen when you passed it hasn't been, hasn't happened hasn't happened yes. it hasn't been been engaged in any way so yeah. so you think well i mustn't have passed you know maybe i don't know am i sleeping or am i dreaming even you know some think that even but mm -hmm. the majority don't even think that you know mm. they're not even aware that any transition has occurred whatsoever so they're kind of trying to interact with people on earth and live their life just like they had Yes, and, and uh, that can be a little frustrating because mm -hmm. most people on Earth are not going to hear you or mm -hmm. see you. Mm -hmm. But there are sort of interactions they feel, and so that's where it gets a bit muddy as well. Mm. Because you, you, can, you know that they think you're there, mm. but they're not talking to you yeah. and things like that. So, yeah. you know, it gets a bit, that gets a bit strange as well. And you say, what's happened now to them? What, what's going on? Why are they... They're not talking to me anymore, but, but, but they know I'm here. I can feel they know I'm here. They're thinking about me. And wh yeah. why aren't they saying anything, you know? And yeah. like, there's a lot of confusion about those kind of things. Yeah. 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 Um, and so in the end, the net result is we're not aware. Most people are not aware that they've passed because nothing big and dramatic happens. They're still trying to live their life. And to still some same degree, desires, same desires, and same just, wants, same dislikes, same likes. There's no miraculous transformation. Same thoughts. Yeah. Uh, same self concept. Yep. Uh, as before, you know, you, you know that you are who you are. Yeah. Nothing's changed there. You know, you still know, like it was me changing. I still know I'm Jesus in the first century, or Alan John Miller now, or whatever, yeah, yeah. in the past. And, yeah. And you know that. Yeah. It's not, yeah. there's no lack of awareness in any of those ways, in that in regard. In that regard. And so you, so you end up just not noticing that you've died, really. Not really, no. It's, so life is just continuing. It's just a bit strange for some reason. Mm -hmm. And for many, they don't even think it's strange. Mm. And, and, in, and if I can give some examples of that, if, if groups of people pass together, mm -hmm. like a whole family passes, mm -hmm frequently they won't even notice mm. because they free, many times if they are in similar condition you mm -hmm. know and that's sometimes the case mm -hmm. they'll all still be together after the past and so they'll think nothing is any has changed at all yeah they're still talking to each other they're still relating to each other there's no yep. feelings of loss yeah 
you know, so you notice that with uh, events such as cataclysmic events on Earth, you know, where there's, you know, volcanoes, earthquakes or something like that, and where groups of people pass on mass, a whole village passes or whatever. Yep. And frequently they all, if they are in the same condition, you know, it's not always the case, obviously mm -hmm. everyone's an individual, but if they are, they will all be in the same place and so all just, thinking the same thing. And wow, that was a pretty bad event, that one, but we survived it. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so they would e literally be inhabiting in their spirit form the same location on Earth even. Generally, and, yes. Yeah. yeah, generally. Yeah. yeah. And would you say that um, there's often because there's fear of death or some emotion surrounding death or some strong attachment to the Earth life, there's, there's a strong tendency to deny any evidence to the contra to, to yeah. that support that you're actually No, passed. that's very true. Yeah. And remember here we're talking about not, not everybody who yeah. passes this way, you know, not everybody, but most people have one or more of the things that we've talked about. Mm -hmm. and, and even if they have become aware of they passed, they still have one or more of the things we've talked about where they believe certain things about, you know, what passing is going to look like and feel like and everything else. And like many Christians, for example, might know they've passed, but mm -hmm. they sit down waiting for, um, you know, to be at God's right hand or, yep. or with Jesus, you know, and, and things like that. And and when those things don't happen, they think, oh, I, I, they don't understand what's going on now. And so now it all becomes very, like, there's a lack of definite goals or direction yep. and so forth. So uh, the passing of an ind a person is as individual as the person. Mm -hmm. And, but that being, the, but generally, yeah. many people who have, have been involved in a large amount of sin on earth, yep. and, and God's definition of a large amount of sin is very different to our definition, yep. and generally most of those people remain earthbound for significant periods of time as a result of not really understanding that they've passed. That they've passed, yeah. Mm. So the majority of people... Yeah, the majority of people are earthbound for at least a short period of time, usually, mm -hmm. usually a few months. Uh, you know, pretty much close to everyone's usually around mm -hmm. a few months. And then, and then like many people are hundreds and sometimes thousands of years mm. earthbound. Yeah. So would you say when we're not aware of our passing that we haven't yet entered the spirit world and completed the process of passing? So, certainly. We've entered the spirit world physically, obviously, but but emotionally and and intellectually mm. we're still really on earth mm. and our soul is still you know attached to our spirit body but we're still you know like living on earth usually on uh, by, lo by location mm -hmm. so so that means that really our passing our the full effects of our passing haven't been felt at all at this stage yes so we we haven't consciously made a transition to, which is a part of letting go of our physical body and our physical existence. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's important where you say consciously made the transition. Mm -hmm. if, if you don't make consciously make the transition, then there's a whole heap of things that cannot happen to you, right. um, you know, to, to enable a change. Now, of course, if your condition is really good, it's very different because mm -hmm. if your condition is quite good and you've done loving things on earth, um, then what happens is you, you pass immediately to a place uh, where you generally are welcomed and educated mm -hmm. based on your condition. And these particular places far exceed the beauty of Earth itself. And so you're quite aware yep. that there's been some major transition, transition. in your life yeah. as a result of that. But the darker your condition, ironically, the less aware you are. Mm. 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 That's very interesting. Mm. Yeah. But, it, and it's also interesting what you say because I tend to think of it sometimes in very literal terms, like there's the earth and then there's, it's almost like a Christian idea of the pearly gates, but, the, you know, <laughs> there, there's a spirit world mm -hmm. that I enter um, because I know some of how that happens and it, it almost feels like you're physically entering mm. a new place. But it's interesting you said you're already in the spirit world as soon as you lose your spirit body, uh, mm. your physical body, sorry. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, like our personal experience has been very different to what we observe, obviously. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in the first century, my personal experience 
was I went to a place of unimaginable beauty. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously I knew about all the hills, so I visited them purposefully after I passed mm -hmm. to educate people. And, you know, so my, my actions in the first century after I passed were very different than the average person. I engaged a process of education in a, in a fully conscious way that I was doing it while on earth. I knew what was happening when I was passing. I knew why or knew what was going on. I knew what I could do. I did some of the things on earth to visit the people to convince them and so forth. This is very, very different than the average person because of all having all the knowledge means that you now can make a lot of choices that you wouldn't mm -hmm. have otherwise made. Mm -hmm. um, and your passing too was quite different than the average person. You're already in quite a good condition mm -hmm. in comparison to the average person who passes. And so the place, it was a place more of beauty than a place of darkness. There's some pain and suffering emotionally to address, but Definitely. but in a place of beauty, it's a bit easier to feel it than it is in a place of darkness. So our personal experiences are not quite the same as what the average person would now experience. No, but I suppose in raising that, I was just trying to... Um, uh, I felt you made an important point that we're already in the spirit world even when we're earthbound yes. it's just that we're not we haven't made this conscious transition that's right and it seems to me from what i felt that when you make the conscious transition it, all, it almost is like entering another place it is, you, it is. i mean you you are as well yeah, but you, it is yeah. yeah because it because if you think about it when you're earthbound obviously you're used to the earth you feel it feels everything feels the same yeah. nothing feels very different yeah but once you're conscious that you pass you are usually also conscious well where am i living now where do i live now mm -hmm. I, i'm not obviously i could choose to live on earth but there must be somewhere else if i'm still alive yes then there also must be somewhere else to, to live. live and that's what causes you then to engage a new location of living mm -hmm. whether that be in the hills or in the first sphere or second or yeah. third sphere Usually most people pass in one of those three st states, yep. um, most in the hills and, and most in the first sphere. Um, but when you're there, you sort of, um, you're now aware that you've passed. So you know it's a new location. You know you're in a different location than you were on earth. Mm -hmm. And you might not understand the reasons why. Mm because the law of compensation determines the reasons why. Yeah. And most people are uneducated about the law of mm -hmm. compensation. But mm -hmm. but you at least know that you've passed and this is a new location. Yeah. And that's the start of new developing awareness. And that's the sort of the end of the passing process that you've you have passed yeah, then. Yeah, probably. yeah you've passed yeah. then. Yeah. 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 No, that's really good. We talk a little bit more in a later section about how compensation is applied after you've completed that process. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Okay. All right. So how sin feels for the average person who has passed away or died? <laughs> so this, this question has some relevance to our previous section, which mm. we just talked about, about how we actually know we've passed and how, how that relates to how much sin we engage and so on. But if, if we just answer this uh, briefly and in summary, how does sin feel after we die in comparison to when we are alive on earth? Well, in, initially, because our condition hasn't changed and because our awarenesses haven't changed, and even if we have now, we are now aware that we have died, yes. that is the only awareness that has actually changed. Yes. So, so all of the other conditions of our soul, all of the demands, the addictions we have, all of our so-called loves, if you can call them that, mm -hmm. our likes, our dislikes, and everything else remains identical mm -hmm. to what it's always been. Mm -hmm. That being the case, if I was enjoying sin before I passed, mm -hmm. that's highly likely I'm going to have exactly the same feeling about sin after I've passed. Yeah. Which means that I'm going to probably continue to sin. Yeah. Right? If I liked a certain action before I passed, I will probably t desire to keep that action going after I've passed. Mm -hmm. If I, uh, and, and the problem partly is that my addictions and my uh, are now even felt more like a frenzy because it's like I can satisfy them more easily. Mm -hmm. So, so 
So most of my addictions now um, are able to be engaged more readily. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, if I have an undeveloped conscience, I have a desire to do, well, everybody's the same. Every, everybody where I am is doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's highly likely that I'm going to be encouraged into doing the same thing, the same thing or even worse mm -hmm. uh, by that environment. Because I'm not in a good environment anymore where I can be amongst good people or uh, I'm now in an environment that matches my condition. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be in an environment where everybody agrees with me. Mm -hmm. So that's going to highly likely increase my desire to sin. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I haven't finished my sin yet. Yeah. This yeah. is the first stage where I haven't finished my sin. I'm aware I've died, but I still haven't finished, finished my sin. sin. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okie doke. So then we're still incre increasing our debt of sin, really. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, and, and this is a very common thing after people pass that they they're surrounded naturally by the with the law of attraction demands that they are surrounded by people who feel and think the same way they do mm -hmm. and, and it's very hard in that place to stop sinning when all the people around you feel and, and think the same way you do about the sin you're committing there is an important distinction isn't there in that now i'm in my spirit body my spirit senses are far more sensitive, aren't they? Yes, this is the trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, the trouble or the... Well, it's a very good thing. It's, it's, it's an operation very, of compensation. Very, it is it? an operation yeah. of compensation, but it's also a very good thing. The reason why we're more sensitive is because the techniques that we used in our physical body to deny our spirit body sensations mm -hmm. can't work anymore because they were a part of our techniques that belong to the physical body. Mm -hmm. So now, what before when we could detune from an emotion, now we can't. Yeah. That also means that when we could detune a bit from an addiction, we can't. Mm -hmm. So every desire within us is like intensely, like we want to satisfy it. So if my if it's a fear based desire, I I'm especially afraid. Mm -hmm. If it's an anger based desire, I'm especially angry. Mm -hmm. If I'm a if I'm a, if it's a sex based desire, I'm especially in a sexual frenzy, you know. Yeah. And so forth and so forth. Yeah. So so all of my desires and passions now are raw, and they feel to be almost uncontrollable mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. right? But they are also, I'm extremely sensitive emotionally. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that every time I sin now, I feel the extra pain mm. that the sin creates. Whereas, Whereas when before, I, when I was on earth, I wasn't feeling it. Yes, so I had more methods to detune or I just simply that I was primarily connected to my physical body, which senses are uh, less... Uh, well, there's less senses of there's the physical body senses. for a start yep. compared to the spirit body. Yep. But on top of that, this physical body can detune from spirit body sensations yes. by using techniques, physical techniques, you know, denial, food and other yep. other things to yep. detune. You can't use those things now. Yep. So so now it's now you're going to engage those addictions probably more in a frenzy than you ever have before yeah. for a period of time. Yeah. And uh, and that's why if you don't give up an addiction when you're on Earth, there's a high likelihood <clears throat> that you're going to engage that addiction like in a frenzy for some time after, after you've, passed. you've passed. Got you. Mm. Yep. However, you're still engaging it. It's still feeling satisfying and good. You're still often wanting to remain unaware. And so the net result is very similar to how it is on Earth, isn't it? Yeah, with a few exceptions. One, it obviously, is this sensitivity to the pain and suffering of it all. Which is a good, a good thing because yeah. if we weren't ever sensitive to pain and suffering of it all, we'd probably never stop. Yeah. You see, so, you know, the beauty is that each new sin that we commit increases our pain. Mm -hmm. And eventually we get so tired and exhausted of the pain itself yeah. that we stop. Yes. And the pain, the pain gets so exhausting that we can't even take a further action mm -hmm. without having so much pain that the action's no longer possible. Yeah. So, so this is why we stop. And so that, in that way, it's similar to the process on Earth. We engage and engage in a frenzy that we don't want to be aware of. Eventually, it gets tiring and exhausting, yep. and we have some kind of restrictions due to the operation of compensation upon us. Mm -hmm. In the spirit world, if we've if we've 
not dealt with any of those primary desires and desire for a lack of awareness will continue, continue, continue. The pain is more heightened and it gets tiring and exhausting. So it's almost like a similar pattern, yeah. but uh, from what you're saying, God's yeah, created it. especially sensitive to it. Yes, yeah, God's created it to um, make us more sensitive so that yep. in the end we end up changing something. Yeah. yeah. Now here we're talking about the average person and what, who uh, is alive right now and how they pass. Yeah. The reality is not everybody passes like this. You know, there are many people who have good intentions, not a, uh, and it's not, certainly not the majority, but many people have good intentions, have had a life where they've done some good deeds. Mm -hmm. And of course, they're positively rewarded for these particular things. Yeah. So, so what we're listing here is not, um, you know, what you can pass like, but rather what the average person passes like. And we're, we're discussing specifically <clears throat> here how sin feels. Yes. Because we're going to talk in our next session section about compensation, which, as you mentioned, has both positive and negative mechanisms. Of course. But here we're talking how sin feels for the average person after they've passed. Yes. Yeah. So for the average person after they've passed, they still want to engage the same sins mm -hmm. that they engaged before they passed. Yes. But now they are a bit more in tune emotionally with mm -hmm. the effect of the sin upon themselves. Mm -hmm. They're still very rarely in tune with the effect upon others. Mm -hmm. And they certainly have no knowledge usually of the effect that God's laws are having them at the time. Mm -hmm. And they also are not seeing how those sins are affecting their relationship with God. Mm. But, but because of the sensitivity to themselves, it's quite selfish. Yes. They have at least some awareness that something's wrong. Something, something is increasingly wrong. Yeah. 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 Mm. Okay, great. Mm. Thank you. Compensation is immediately imposed once I am aware of passing. Mm. So this section is relevant to some of our previous discussion, which was about this making this conscious transition yeah. into passing. Yes. So in this section, we're now talking about that, um, how compensation is felt once I'm, once I'm aware that I've passed. Yeah. And so what we can do is basically we could preamble it with, well, if we're not aware we're past, yeah. then we're probably not aware of compensation at all. Mm. And, and also, because we're not aware we've passed, we're not aware of a new condition, a new location or any of the other things because we're probably earthbound. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so it's very, very difficult for us to even think anything has changed. Mm -hmm. and, and frequently we don't even think anything has, including uh, uh, anything to do with ourselves. Yeah. So, so we've got to sort of preamble this section with, well, let's assume that we have passed. We know we've passed. Mm -hmm. We're consciously aware that we've passed. Mm -hmm. We might have gone through some introductory phase of the spirit world if if our condition allows for it yep. and if our desires allowed for it. Yep. We might have met friends or family if our condition and desire allows for that. Mm -hmm. We might have done a, a whole heap of uh, things that help us become more and more aware that, mm -hmm. yeah, we've passed. We might have even visited our own grave yep. and watched our own funeral mm -hmm. <laughs> and therefore become aware that um, we've passed. So. You know, there's a lot of ways that we become aware that we pass and the ways we become aware are just as individual mm -hmm. as uh, in terms of the character of the passing is just as individual as the individual individual personality of the individual is. So, uh -huh. so you know, there could be billions of ways that, you know, that are different for uh, in terms of what a person experiences there. And God's designed it that way because God wants it to be as loving as possible for you, mm -hmm. uh, the person who's passing. Mm -hmm. So it will be the best possible thing that can happen mm -hmm. under the circumstances mm -hmm. that will help you become aware of your own passing. Yeah. Assuming that's happened. <laughs> Assuming that's happened and we're consciously aware. Yeah. How is compensation immediately felt? 
Well, the first thing we need to say is that it's always immediately felt uh-huh. on Earth, but, yeah. but the trouble is we're detuned from our feelings. Mm-hmm. So in conversation is immediately imposed upon the soul when we're on Earth. Mm-hmm. However, the, all of the effects are not immediately mm-hmm. imposed upon the soul because they take time to develop mm-hmm. and they only uh, happen over that period of time. But once we've passed, everything we've done in our Earth life is now immediate it was is there already because it's all happened in the past uh-huh. so it's all there it's all yep. happened it's all now going to be immediately imposed upon us so that means that if we did good if we did uh, loving things uh, from god's perspective uh, then our our personal appearance will match the love that we have mm-hmm. our environment environmental circumstances will match the love we have mm-hmm. Our level of awareness will match the our mm-hmm. level of awareness of the spirit world and mm-hmm. everything that we have. Our personality and nature hasn't changed. Mm-mm. Our character hasn't changed. Those things are all going to remain the same, but any facade has been gotten rid of, and so I'm aware also of some other things that I look like. And all of my friends and family and environment and all that will, will all obviously be dependent upon uh, my condition and, and what my condition mm. will display. My feelings will also be mm-hmm. happily rewarded. So <laughs> yep. I'll have happy feelings about the things that I've done. Yes. Yeah. Yep. As well. So perhaps if I can just read mm-hmm. from sure. our notes. So immediately that I've completed this process of passing yep. in a conscious way. And now I'm aware. Now I'm aware. Yep. Uh, and I might have had some kind of introductory experience experience yep. to help me really become really consciously aware that In, this is including what's some kind of convalescence yep. Pre- yep potentially and potentially i might have been taken through some kind of life review even would i uh, unlikely unlikely yeah, okay unlikely the li- whole life review uh-huh. theory comes from the reincarnation theories and and uh, having a life review is not even necessary because you're judged immediately upon your condition. Mm -hmm. So it's no real life review. It's Mm -hmm. like you are immediately what you are. The time when you see your life fully is after you've, uh, just before you enter the celestial heavens, in fact. Mm -hmm. And so it's very rare for anybody to experience what's called a life review. Mm, Now, they may pointedly do a life review if that's their belief system. So in other words, uh-huh. a re- person who believes in reincarnation will go, okay, now I've got to do my life review, you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so he will sit down and try and do his life yeah, review, but that's yeah. based on his belief. Gotcha. And that's not what happens to everybody. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So, but presuming it's complete, I'm entered, I'm consciously entered the spirit world now. Now all deeds harmonious with true and sincere love as God defines love to be mm-hmm. are one immediately rewarded in our home surroundings or environment Mm -hmm. two immediately rewarded in the condition of our spirit body so how it looks and feels feels. and immediately rewarded in the health of our spirit body yep so how it functions yes and this is where you were drawing the difference between our experience of compensation on earth and our experience of compensation in the spirit world. Mm. While it's immediately imposed always, our, it, from what we're talking about here, our entire experience of day-to-day living is, is affected by compensation quite visibly and and dramatically dramatically once we pass yeah, yes yeah and uh and it's affected in so many different ways as you've listed mm-hmm. that 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 we're very conscious of the fact that oh all of our good deeds had a had a great result yeah and all of our negative deeds our, our ones that are out of harmony or sin mm-hmm. had a had a bad result and we, <laughs> we, we become very conscious of that mm-hmm. and and we become so conscious in fact that We'll end up with a list of all of our good deeds and all of our bad deeds mm. um, that we'll have to that we will have compensation for for our good ones and our and our bad deeds or our unloving deeds will be have a list that we need to be mm. repentant for. But initially, <coughs> um, before we get, are you saying before we get the list, it's just reflected in our environment and our and yes. our body. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, would you like me to read the converse then? Well, the converse or? is obviously the flip side of it all is. that, isn't it? It yeah, is. So, I might pay to read it. So, all deeds disharmonious with true and sincere love as God defines love to be 
are immediately reflected in our home surroundings or environment, mm. immediately reflected in the condition of our spirit body, and immediately reflected in the health of our spirit body. Mm. Nice. <laughs> so, so then you know that like every good thing that you did on earth, even though when you're on earth it was hard, and it was a bit of a struggle and you might have suffered a bit because of doing good things and it's all been worth it. Mm -hmm. That's what, what you end up with a feeling after you've passed, mm -hmm. that it's all been worth it. And because you because of the amazing results it had in your life after you've passed. Yeah. You know I just read the Disharmonious with Love bit though, didn't you? Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, sorry. I thought you would be. I was very surprised. Jesus is being sarcastic <laughs> when you said lovely. <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry about that. But, but yeah, you're right. When it's harmonious, it's like I mentioned. Yeah. But disharmonious, yeah, it's still the same. Yeah. Which is really good too. Yeah. Because what that means is that instead of like seeing, not seeing the truth of what you did. Yeah. You now see the truth of what you did. Yeah. And you now see the truth of what you did. And not just what everybody else thinks you did. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, if everyone else thought you were good, but you weren't that good, yeah. you, it's reflected mm -hmm. as well. And and I can see here again, this is a way that God is really try attempting to educate me. I've resisted knowing this so much that I've continued to act in this sin now, or or yeah, let's do it in the case of sin now. Uh, not only is my conscience bothering me and I have this soul-based pain, but now everything around me is starting to reflect that. Yeah. And so God's really trying to say, hey, wake up here, you know, yeah. And frequently the people on earth who engage the most sin have an opulent lifestyle mm. on earth, mm. but that is severely contrasted mm. after they've passed mm. because their, their lifestyle matches their condition once yeah. they've passed. Yeah. And, that, and, and if they've done a lot of sin on earth, it means their condition is very, very bad and their location is very, very bad mm -hmm. and they can't get out of it. Yeah. And so that, that is a very confrontational process, mm -hmm. uh, as you can imagine, for a person who's used to opulence or, or wealth on earth. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. Okay.